<laughs> oh shit. There we go. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Ah, uh, so I changed my helmet to my old helmet. Hold up. Yeah. Changed my helmet to my old helmet, the uh, Bell uh, Racing Helmet, Carbon Fiber One. The shoey kills my ears when I'm wearing earplugs and trying to record a video. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you guys can hear me. Hopefully it's better than the shoey. But today's my birthday, so I was figured I'd go out on a ride and uh, get some footage. I've been ultra super busy with work, real life work. I mentioned in the comments in my comeback video, I work remotely. Uh, I'm actually a software developer, so it's been, things have been busy with the company I've been working for in New York, so I just haven't had time to make any videos or do any updates or anything like that. But I did push out episode four of the CR250 super single build so if you haven't seen that check it out please oh tell me what you think about it it's coming together so well and we got the rs250 front fairing and belly pan that got shipped in or rather not shipped in it air tech streamlining there 20 minutes down the road from where i live so i picked them up it took about a month or so to get that organized so I'm working out the fairing mounts for the bike. It's coming together. It's just gonna be really tight. I'm gonna have to make a lot of cuts, but hopefully I can get it like fixed and working inside uh, without too much of an issue. The exhaust pipe, because it's a motocross style exhaust two stroke, it's, you know, wraps around in the front and that's where I'm gonna have to shave off or remove some material from the fairing so hopefully it doesn't look too weird hopefully i can still use it i don't think i'm gonna have enough time or funds to get someone to build me a custom exhaust this time around so uh we'll just have to deal with it the way that it is as far as racing goes i'm gonna try and get myself out to the track for the start of the season at cvma COVID-19 really kicked me in the face in terms of keeping me at home. So I'm way out of practice. I'm way uh, out of timing and everything. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer. And we're trying to save up some money because we don't know what's going to happen uh, in terms of our finances if, uh, if things get a little bit tight. Uh, considering what's going on in the world right now. So racing may have to take a slight back seat. We'll see. But, you know, if I don't get to race in September, there's always October, December. There's a bunch of races this season, so I'm not overly concerned. The goal for me is just to go get my expert license Technically, I had enough points or almost enough points to do it the first season I went around, but I think I'm just going to start an amateur class again, especially if I'm going to be racing with the CR250. But yeah, that's pretty much getting you guys up to speed on what's been happening with the bikes and with my personal life. I'm riding right now with Just Killing Time. I'll put a link in the description to his social media. He's a pretty interesting dude. We, we gotta check out his bike. 
that he's been working on, it is hilarious in all the kinds of ways that you would think a bike is hilarious. I mean, look at this, look at this thing. <laughs> so we'll, we'll check that out when we pull over. It sounds mean though. He's put a good amount of work into the motor, uh, getting it tuned up. He got himself uh, a set of Vance Hines pipes for his Honda Shadow and a velocity stack and all this all this craziness. So it's finally like coming together for him, which I'm super excited about. So today we are going to go ride down Del Dios Highway. Uh, I'm not really sure where on that highway we're going specifically because uh, it's it's kind of short and boring. So I think he's uh, taking us somewhere with some sweepy roads. No drag need today. Not trying to kill myself. I'm not even in my leathers. Uh, we just packed up and left. So I gotta take it take it easy. I am not dressing for the slide today. In other news, uh, we may have another bike in the stable that we picked up. This bike is this bike is for wifey. She wanted to ride a motorcycle. Ever since I met her, she's always wanted a, a ninja, Kawasaki ninja. So we may have picked up a little ninja for her. Brand new off the showroom floor. Uh, once we get everything situated with that, because she wants to ride it on her own. She doesn't really want me to do any vlogs on it. Which I don't blame her. It's her bike. But uh, once, once she's gotten over the fresh brand newness of the bike, uh, maybe we'll do a little video here or there with it. It's the Phantom Gray and teal or blue, one of those colors. Uh, the, the color's gorgeous, and I'm almost tempted to find the color code to, to make the uh, CR250 that color, because it's, it's really like, it's really nice. It's really, really fresh. I have to say, Kawasaki really outdid themselves this time around with the Ninja. I could see why it's, I can see why it's hugely popular. So, to give a little content to this video, other than Jesse and I just bombing it out through the rich neighborhoods of Rancho Santa Fe, California, uh, I'm gonna pose another question for you guys watching the video and say, what is your, where is your favorite place to ride? And that could be, uh, you know, just one place you've been to that you haven't gone back to before, maybe even a road that you frequent a lot. Uh, and why is it your favorite place? I'll tell you mine. It's, it actually comes with a little bit of a stipulation because the only time it's fun to ride was when I had this bike. So back in New York, because that's where I'm from originally, I started riding on two wheels through mopeds actually, like the vintage ones, not scooters or no, no, none of those weird things. Like actually, you gotta pedal start the damn things. They look like bicycles. They're so awesome, I love them. I had a Peugeot TSM and I got it through a friend of a friend and he had, he was the second owner 
the original owner was some guy who lived in the area must have bought it when he was uh, a teenager in high school or something back in the 80s he had it for two years and it must have sat in the garage or something for, for a long period of time so my friend bought it off of him barnyard finds and then I bought it off of that guy and that bike topped out at maybe 25 miles an hour at the most there's a two stroke it's I'll show you a picture but it's a gorgeous bike I've had so much fun with it and in upstate New York there is a road out the back of Albany that I used to ride and once it would come to autumn and the air was cooler you know it's about 50 degrees it's about 50 degrees cold Albany air you know the elevation's a little bit high not high mountains but like high for for upstate New York and the trees were all this beautiful red yellow orange now Albany itself is a it's kind of a big city I guess and as far as cities go nothing like New York City or anything like that but what it does have going for it is lots of long back roads that's just covered in forest and hills and and mountains depending on how far you want to go so I used to go down uh, can't remember the exact name of the road but it just used to go on twisting and winding and I remember the smell when I used to be able to smell because I've lost all that sense of smell thanks to my allergies the smell was great it was like wet leaves and earth and it was quiet the bike itself was was quiet i mean it's a 50 cc two-stroke you could hear nothing but you know the, the the road around you it was great i really enjoyed that time i had lots of fun memories with that bike and i regret selling it but the person who has it now is taking really good care of it he's uh made it his own and he rides it pretty often so i'm happy where it's at but yeah just this it's just a small road back roads down in albany new york that i really miss i would love to take like the r3 through those roads you don't even have to go fast just enjoy the trees enjoy enjoy the scenery enjoy not getting hit but hey hey <laughs> this guy oh my horn button's not working it's got stuck there we go <laughs> yeah just a little back road on albany i really enjoyed that like i said i had lots of fun memories with that bike what about you guys what road have you been on that kind of like really cemented riding for you and you're not going to forget ever all right jesse where are you taking me oh this looks like my kind of road nice sharp turn here ready to kill yourself if you bin it I like it, I like it. Oh, decreasing radius turn, all right. Sharp right-hander. Oh, this is pretty cool. Man, this road's really sick. Look at this freaking view, guys. 
This is the lake down by Ramona. Highland Valley is on the other side of this hill area. It's another awesome stretch of road. So lots of really good little back roads down in uh, then in these little corners of the valley and these highway roads like all, all this like is kind of like weird residential area but not really right because once the tourist season comes around this place is probably packed looks like we're heading right I think Got kind of like this little mountain bike path that would be pretty awesome if you're into that kind of stuff. Check out this little house. Cafe or something. I'm not sure what that is. Very Western. Oh, here we go. Let's get a picture in front of this bench right. with the bikes. Okay. You put your bike here and I'll put my bike on the other side. Which pocket's got the key? Ah, uh, this pocket. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Took a little pit stop because it's freaking hot. Freaking hot, man. You know, there's a road I wouldn't say captivated my heart, but it definitely was not a fun ride, but I will remember it forever. When I brought this bike from Phoenix, Arizona to San Diego, I drove it all the way over. That took me two days to do, because I left at nighttime. Uh, it was about, I want to say five o'clock when I left from Phoenix, 5 p.m. And I stood overnight at one of the hotels along the way, I think near Yuma, Arizona. But I, I had just finished the racing season and I still had the Pirelli super courses on this bike. They were a little bit clapped out, but they were like the, the middle of the tire had a tread left, so it was fine. And they're DOT tires, so I could still ride them legally. But I had those on this bike and nothing else, no backpack, nothing. Just my race leathers. And it was windy as heck, man. Like this little bike, going at 80 miles an hour in the dark down I-10 and then cutting over towards I-8 it was like tossing me left and right left and right all over the place there's no lights or anything on that highway it's just straight up desert and it was quiet there's no radio I didn't have any earbuds or anything there's just several hours of non-stop getting blown by the wind on this tiny little bike on a two-lane highway in the dark. It was fun. Would I do it again? Maybe. Do I recommend it? Definitely not. 
it was it was pretty freaking sketchy. The next morning I woke up pretty early and then I got to San Diego. But yeah, I <laughs> I'll never forget that stretch of road. I've driven down it multiple times in uh in a car, but to do it on the R3, which was basically race prepared on super courses, when I got to San Diego, I had to throw those tires away. They were already, they already had, I'd say about five races on them. So the sides were were pretty messed up, you know, because I, I chewed out all the, the rubber. The sensors were fine, and I had ridden them in Phoenix on the street probably for, I don't know, about 100 miles. But then I added basically oh, almost a 1,000 on them just in a straight line, and they were bald. And it was a nice big flat spot. So yeah, if you guys have done a ride like that, that's pretty dumb. <laughs> let me know. I kind of want to. I'm kind of curious. Unless I'm the only idiot out here, which I can't be. But anyway, I'm gonna sign off before the camera battery starts to go out, or I run out of footage space, whichever comes first. But thanks for joining me on my birthday. I really appreciate it. Uh, feel free to check out some of the other stuff that I got going on in the future. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy your summer, and I'll see you in the next video. Guys, look, look at this bike. It's got so much fucking character. Can't, how can I be as cool as you? You gotta get a panhead. <laughs> get a panhead, huh? Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this nonsense, guys. Check. Check that out. Like, when I grow up, I want a bike like this.